Great. Thanks for having me. I guess probably to, to start with, um, as you mentioned, my name is Nick Cobra. I'm from Howick Engineering. So we've been building roll forming machinery since 1978. Um, for panelized framing for probably the last 30 years, but also lots of custom machines along the way as well. Um, so a bit of a background to the telescopic stud and why we've developed this system. If you look at panelized systems, the problem has always been, how do you make them fit into a building? So we would go and site measure, and then you'd get there and something had changed, so it didn't fit. So all that panelization um, advantages that you had now don't become an advantage, they become more work. So the first sort of thought process for this was, right, we'll go and we'll 3D point cloud or laser scan the entire building and then design the panels perfect to fit in there. And it's still the same problem. You get to site, something's moved, someone's screeded the floor or changed the ceiling or something like that that doesn't work. So we sort of went back to, right, how do we make it simple? Uh, a stud that's adjustable would make it simple. So. We developed the machine you'll be seeing now. Um, and the idea being that we can actually compress the panels and make them smaller and then extend them out to fit in the gaps. So we can go straight from a Revit model and apply sort of a 10% tolerance to it. So we can be 10% bigger or 10% smaller and still fit in the building. Um, so you can see here some panels being played within our factory as to how we were developing it. So the idea being there that we have a two axis option. <clears throat> so we can go up and down or, or in and out to fit the gap. Now typically the panels will be only a single axis in most cases and you're using the two axis ones where there's an issue with the building or where it's the last panel in a row. From that, we then sort of started to look at, okay, now the square hole that they go in isn't always square. So we can actually split the panel and then you can have different angles and different fittings. So you've got a bit of adjustment for fitting into a panel, into a space where it would not normally fit. Um, and the third use case that we started with was soffit panels. So you always want the bottom of your soffit to be level with the floor. So not always is the case that the ceiling is level with the floor. So the way we use these is we actually attach them to the ceiling component and then pulled them down to a laser level so that the building is square and true to the person inside it. Um, and again, it leads to a lot of other uses. So these are roof panels that are built on the ground and then lifted up into place and telescoped to fit the size. So we can do all the work on the ground and then lift up with a lift put it in place and fit, the fitment is easy. So the time saving is huge because the typical process of this would be going up and down to measure and check and cut and then carry a piece up, fit it and then bring the next piece up. So you can see instantly where these savings come in very quickly. Um, another application that we came across, which is where a human time saving comes in is double T concrete floors, which is a unique use um, not everyone builds this way but one of the things you've got to do with these is you've got to fireproof them so you've got to then frame out inside these concrete precast units that are not always the same they're they're within a tolerance which is great so we can actually use the telescope to create that tolerance movement um, and the process being that we actually fitted these to the double t sections and then brought the wall in from underneath to seal them up so fitting one of these units was sort of two to three minutes up on a scissor lift, where typically to do it in a manual process of climbing up and down ladders and cutting and fitting, you might take 45 minutes. So instantly you've got a massive saving. You've taken that really hard piece out of the process. And again, we can work straight from the model. So as long as your Revit model or your um, IFC model is within a reasonable accuracy, we know it's going to fit. Um, and this is just a model of an apartment where we did them. So you can see that double T section lying across the top of the frame and then the frame underneath. Um, again, working from the model, not from the laser scan. So the first big project we did in New Zealand was with a company called LT McGuinness, who we worked with closely to develop the system and to develop how they're fitting them. So the process they did here is we took the model of the building and turned it into telescopic panels. And these panels were built in our factory in Auckland and shipped to Wellington. So it's about 700 kilometres away. Um, and what we found is if we did flat packs, 
So we made all the pieces and bundled them and the guys assembled them in the on the site and then put them into place. They were saving about 50% of the install time because of the telescopic nature. Where if we actually assembled the panels in our factory and trucked them fully assembled to Wellington, they then took them off the truck, loaded them into the site elevators and took them to the floor and then a team of two installed them into each apartment. And that resulted in about a 75% reduction in installation labor and time. So again, you're spending a bit more on the telescopic section and on the process of doing all the design work, but the massive savings at the back end. And bearing in mind, this was during all our COVID lockdowns in New Zealand. So we had severe restrictions on the number of people that could be on a site and in a space at any one time. So it helped us on that front as well. Um, off the back of this project, we've then picked up a whole lot of other projects with these customers. So you can see here the load going down on the truck and the, on the other side is the finished building which has just been completed. Um, then another project we did early on was a big shopping centre for Westfield who is a big shopping centre company in Australia and New Zealand and into Europe as well now. Um, what we found with this project which was one of the very first we did is that the telescopic panels could be 90 85 to 90 percent the same because the fit out for a shop is a plain wall with a couple of openings in it so what we could actually do is make the most of this prefabrication and build all the standard panels ahead of time and deliver them as needed and then come back and fill in that last 10 percent with all the customized panels which again were not overly customized because of the telescopic nature allowed us to fit them into multiple gaps so it just brings that timeline back hugely so that's kind of an example of how all the components fit together. Um, and then this is where we start to work with Struxsoft as to how do we take that model, how do we apply that section for the compressible stud and, and how do we design that easily. So you know, we want to automate that process so there's not so much thinking of how am I going to make these compressible studs, it's kind of how do we apply it quickly to a Revit model to save the design time as well as the installation time. So that... All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Nick, for your uh, presentation there. Uh, we'll now move on to Hannah, who will be uh, demonstrating the integration between Howick Machinery and Stuffsoft Wood and Light like Steel Printing Software, MWF. Hannah, the floor is all yours. Hi, everyone. We're very excited today about this week's webinar. Thanks for the introduction, Rishab, and thank you, Nick, for the presentation. As Rishab mentioned, my name is Hannah Elian. I'm a software specialist here at Structsoft Solutions, and today I will be covering the software application portion for this week's webinar. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump into this introduction sheet. So for the next portion of the webinar, I will be talking about uh, how it telescopic panels in MWF, so today, we're going to be talking about how to create and upload Howick telescopic panels using MWF. Uh, the bullet points for this webinar is, we're going to be loading Revit Howick families into the Revit project. We're going to be placing these Howick families into the MWF panel. And then we're gonna talk about applying the telescopic panel tool. And for the last portion of this presentation, we're going to be uploading the panel into Onyx. Okay, so let's jump into our project. Uh, before we start, uh, just, to, just to let you know, I will be using uh, Revit 2023. I'm currently using MWF Pro Suite, and I will be using the build 8221. So before we start, I would like to show this really simple panel uh, that has been pre-created prior to this demonstration. We're going to be recreating this in a few minutes. We're going to keep it really simple for today because there is a lot to talk about uh, in this webinar. First of all, let's analyze this panel a little bit before uh, we start. If we zoom in here, you will notice that this panel has been created to allow the on-site flexibility that Nick had mentioned. If I zoom in here, this portion right here, and this portion right here, and all of the above portion up here. If I actually zoom in a little bit more, 
You'll notice that the frames that have been used for these portions here, they're very specific Howick families. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in a little bit. And if I uh, also if I grab this one here, this is also a very specific uh, Howick family. So all of the members in this panel here are uh, uh, specific Howick families. So if I actually double click here on this particular family, okay, it's going to open up the family. So this is uh, a BMSF Howick R horizontal. This is how it looks like in 3D. I actually want to show you just how this is going to look like here in the profile. So this is the profile for this family. Just keep in mind that if you wanted to make changes to this family or add anything, uh, this is not the way uh, to do it. I just wanted to show you here. This is what the D stands for, the distance, the N. Uh, this is the return, the TF. You'll see what I mean in a little bit when I open the TXT file. So this is how this family looks like. I'm going to actually close this. And we'll come back to the families in a little bit. Uh, so these families have been placed in a certain way uh, that allows it to work like a track. So one is working as a track for the other. This allows for the flexibility that uh, we're going to talk about uh, today. And if you take a look here, I'm not sure if you notice these lines. I'm not sure if you're actually familiar with the MWF marker lines. These are actually MWF marker lines. They are the ones that are going to specify how and where the telescopic tool will be placed. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start from scratch. Okay, so I'm going to remove the section box and I'm going to jump into this wall here. So uh, this wall has been, uh, well, it's just an empty wall. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, the settings a little bit here because I'm just going to change the settings because we're going to be using a specific size. I just want to make sure that the wall has the specific size. So I'm just going to actually, I'm going to make this into a few, five, eight. Okay. And I'm going to just change the structure to make it the right size. Okay. So I just uh, changed the wall size because I'm going to use specific, a specific size of families. And what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to just use a simple uh, out-of-the-box template to panel this wall here. But before I do that, um, let's pretend that I don't already have these Howick families, okay? Uh, I did preload them in this project, but let's pretend that I didn't. Because keep in mind, uh, these tools that we're going to show you today are meant to be used with specific Howick families. So let me show you how to load them or how to actually also how to access them. So to find these families, uh, you can go to the home directory. And uh, you're going to, there, there's a window that's going to pop up and it's going to show you actually where it's located up here. So it should be under your local C, under program data, Structsoft solutions. On my end, it's 2023 because that's the Revit I'm using. So under walls, framing components, Imperial, because I'm using um, an Imperial file here. Uh, you'll find that there are two options. There's the standard, which will usually automatically open. The one we're going to use for today, the file that we're going to have to access for today, is actually the MWF manufacturers. So if I double click here, you'll find the specialized or customized families for uh, some of our partners. Over here, you'll find the Howick families uh, that we're going to focus on for, for today. Before I actually load these families into Revit, I do just want to show you uh, one thing here. Remember the family that I had showed you before? Uh, I'm going to actually open this TXT file. So here in this file, this just shows you how Revit is going to understand these families. Uh, this TXT file uh, has uh, a certain numeric system. Uh, here, there's the D, there's the BF, there's the return, TF, and then there's the weight and uh, other information. I remember when I opened the family, uh, I briefly just mentioned uh, that this is where you will find them. So this is how Revit is going to read it. 
just keep in mind that if you ever wanted to make a family that has uh, specific uh, numbers, uh, you would have to make a copy of one of these and just make a new line, control V, and then you would have to change the numbers here. I'm actually not going to make any changes for now, but I just wanted to show you how you would make a particular family that you're looking for. And no, I'm not going to save anything on my end, and I'm actually going to I'm going to minimize this. Uh, now we're going to import the families that we need. So to do this, we're just going to treat this like a regular Revit family that we're loading. So we would go to insert and then we would click on load family. I had pre-opened uh, these families before, so it just took me to the right location. Again, this is where you would find it. And what you would have to do is you would have to load the following, the one, the families I'm going to mention. You're going to need to load uh, the Howick horizontal and the R stud, uh, the R horizontal, the R stud. You're going to also need to load the the Masaf Howick stud. So these are the families uh, that we're going to uh, load. Uh, so keep in mind that uh, these are the specific families that work with the spe specific command uh, that we're going to show uh, for today. So uh, if I click here on open, uh, this is how Revit understands the text file that we had just seen. What you would do is select uh, the specific sizes that you would need. Uh, I had pre, uh, uh, I guess I have pre-selected uh, the families that I will need from here. So I'm not going to pick anything right now. And in a bit, you're going to see the families that I have chosen for, for this project. So I'm just going to click on cancel for now. And now uh, we're ready to start. So let's actually place in uh, the panel here. To do this, uh, we're just going to go to create. I'm going to use a simple uh, out of the box template because I'm using Pro Suite. I'm going to have light gauge and wood, but I'm going to use light gauge. I'm going to set it as active. And I'm going to create this panel. OK, let's expand this here a little bit. Before I do anything else, I'm going to need to work with the specific families that uh, we have just mentioned. So let's actually select them from here. So uh, for this uh, for this panel, I will be using this specific uh, family type, which is going to be not the R's, the R's, uh, we're going to use them later on. I'm actually going to be using this family here. Sorry, I'm just going to select it. Just make sure that it's the S, and not the T. And I will explain the reason for that in a little bit. Just make sure that it's not the T, that it's the S, because this option does not actually support the T family. There it is. I just want to check that it's the correct family. OK, so there they are. This is the family that I'm using, uh, or the families that I'm using for the, the panel. And then there's one more thing that we have to check. Under miscellaneous, don't forget the openings. So we're going to go to opening framing. And here, I'm just going to use the simple uh, openings option. And here, I'm going to specify the same families that we just talked about which is this one. And this one. OK, so I'm just going to close for now and click on OK. Keep in mind that you can create a template for this uh, if you want, uh, but we will not cover, uh, cover that for today. OK, so the first portion of this panel uh, has been done. We have the families already placed, and now we need to do. Uh, we actually have to apply the telescopic tool. Uh, before we do that, I just want to mention one thing here. You can, if you like, uh, specify a specific distance for the first uh, stud, or you can actually uh, delete it later on because I will be placing uh, markers here um, to allow the flexibility uh, at the end or at the start. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So uh, to place the uh, telescopic tool, we're going to actually have to use the marker command here. So here under uh, MWF, uh, under markers, if you go down here, you have the option to create uh, marker lines. 
I'm going to click on this and uh, I'm going to get this window. And we have the option to create marker lines horizontally or vertically. We're going to have to do uh, both of these, but for now, let's focus on one at a time. Let's focus on the horizontal. We need to click on create horizontal marker lines. You have different options for this marker line. For today, I'm going to be using the last option here because I just want to create one. So it's going to be regular spacing. I'm going to activate that the number of lines is just one. I'm going to have the first offset at two feet, but I'm going to switch it actually. I'm not going to have it at the bottom. I'm going to have it at the top. Here under configurations, you've probably seen this before in other webinars or in other tech tips. You can actually uh, specify if you want to add a stud pack, whole series blocking. These are for another day. But for today, we're going to focus on the telescopic uh, portion here. If you click on your end, um, because I have already pre-created some settings here, I'm getting an option. But on your end, if you don't have, if you haven't created uh, some pre-settings, you're not going to get anything here. What you would have to do is you would have to click on Manage. And I'm going to show you how I created some settings uh, prior to uh, this webinar. So it's very simple. What you would do is you would uh, give it a name and you would specify uh, just make sure that this aligns with this. So if you're creating a horizontal, please make sure that it's uh, you're choosing the horizontal option. Here under telescopic family, and this part is really important, this will only work with uh, the Howick R stud families. So we don't have that many options here in this project. I just had preloaded these two options here, and these are the only ones that are being read from the rest of the families in this project. So this is the family that I'm gonna be using. Just keep in mind, that uh, I have purposely chosen these uh, these two because uh, they're going to be, uh, let's say, working um, together where one is going to be sliding into the other. So this is why I have selected these two sizes. Uh, you can specify a line, uh, the line style. I'm going to keep it as is. Here you would specify a top extension and a bottom extension. I have recreated these options before. So I made a top extension of six inches here. And just keep in mind that you do have to click on add to add that option here. I will talk about the other one a little bit later. So that's it. I'm just going to click on OK. I'm going to make sure that I select it. So it was called one. And then I'm going to click on OK. That's it. We're going to get this marker line. But we don't see anything else yet because we have to regenerate to see the effect of what we have just created. Okay, so the first portion of uh, our job is done. If you take a look here, this is the R family that has been added. And this is the, the other panel member that we had specified in the properties. Let's create the other uh, marker line here. To do this, we're just gonna go over the steps again, one more time. Uh, we're gonna create a marker line, but this time it's gonna be vertical. So we would need to select or tick this option here. And again, I'm just going to use a regular spacing. I'm going to make it just one line and it's going to start at the start. Remember to select the telescopic option here. And you'll notice that the option uh, 01 did not show up and I'm going to show you why. So uh, before I select this, I'm going to click on manage. I have this other window that popped up on my other screen. And uh, the reason is that 02 is uh, what I had pre-created. It's called 02. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, the line type needs to be vertical so that it reads it properly, so that it reads it under vertical. I didn't change the line style, but I actually am going to change the uh, extension here. Let me actually change this. I'm going to make this a uh, six inch. And here we're talking about this right here. So this is the overlapping length. Because I made a change, I'm going to update. So I just updated this and I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to make sure that I select this. And then I'm going to click on OK. And you won't see any change yet. You do have to regenerate. OK. And there it is. So it worked. So um, let me see, you could actually have created, you could have created uh, just the first stud uh, offset, uh, really um, like, let's say a bigger offset than what I have created here. Uh, honestly, for now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to remove these. 
Uh, I'm going to use this option here for today. Okay, I just uh, deleted these numbers. I'm actually just going to delete this one. I'm going to keep this one. Okay. Okay. So that's it for the uh, MWF uh, portion. Uh, we're done with uh, this part here. Uh, now we're going to actually upload this into Onyx. I'm just going to use one of these panels, just maybe this one. So let's uh, make a selection and I'm going to use this. So we're going to upload this into Onyx. Uh, I have uh, here downloaded the uh, Onyx Upload Center on my end. And uh, to do this, we have to actually log in to Onyx twice. So I'm going to click here. It's going to take me to the website. I'm going to log into my account. So I'm just signing in. And here I have to go back to Revit. And I also have to make sure that I log into uh, Onyx uh, using Revit. Uh, if I click here, um, under show, here, Show Upload Manager, it's going to show me this menu. I had pre-signed um, in, but I'm going to actually create a new project uh, for this demonstration. I'm going to call this... Um, webinar, and I'm going to click on Add. So now I'm in this new project that I just created, and now we're going to talk about uh, how we're going to upload this into Onyx. Uh, so those of you who don't know Onyx, Onyx is, um, is a web-based uh, software where you would uh, upload uh, your model uh, so that you could then um, connect your model to different machinery. Today we're talking about how it to do this, there's um, there's a few steps that you would have to do prior to uploading uh, uploading this panel. Before you upload a panel, uh, you would actually have to upload this section. So I'm just going to click here and just show you uh, what this will do. Here under New Components, we have the components that we have never uploaded before. And I've never uploaded this on, on my end. Uh, so uh, you'll notice here that these are new components. I've, I haven't previously uploaded uh, how it sections before. Uh, we would need to do that now. If you click here on Onyx component, the one underneath, this is going to show you uh, the other options or other families or other components that you have preloaded before. And it shows you here uh, a number, which is the version of how many times you have uh, uploaded these before. So these are new components. Uh, here you'll notice it's just saying number one because I've never actually uploaded these before. The important thing I wanted to mention is that it's going to actually show you uh, the section shape. So this is, for example, a C profile with lip. This is a Sigma profile uh, with lip as well. You'll notice that the profile looks different for both of these. I just want to show you something before I actually upload. If I try to upload this panel just by clicking Uploading Panels, uh, before uploading sections, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see that we have panel number one. And if I click here on this panel right here and take a look at the component status, it's going to show me that nothing in this panel has been uploaded into uh, Onyx before as a component. So it's not going to actually work. If I try to upload it, this is not going to actually work. So to fix this, I'm going to click here on Component Upload Manager. It's going to take me again to the uh, Upload Section tool here. So this took me back to the same window. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of them. And um, these are, this just shows you their names, um, their, well, their, the component number, and the section shape, the material. And here it shows you the version. Uh, here, if it was lumber sheathing or hardware, for now, we're just going to focus on uh, these uh, steel profiles. And I'm going to click on Upload. And that's it. It has been uploaded. So uh, I'm going to actually just check. Yep, they're here. Should all be here. OK, so I'm going to click on Close. And now <clears throat> if I go back to the Panel Upload Manager, let's take a look. It's showing everything in green, so it's OK to be uploaded. And I'm going to upload this now.
Okay, and now we got this upload summary. I really like how it uh, tells you what it did. It's uh, very satisfying. It says it has successfully uploaded just one panel because it's all we had. We didn't have any floors or anything else. And here it'll tell you what it skipped. Uh, here it, it didn't skip anything for today. So I'm just going to click on OK. And I'm going to close. I'm just going to go back one more time to Revit. You'll notice that this appears in red. And this is because this panel has been locked. It's locked because it's, it's just indicating that it has been uploaded. Uh, just as a reminder uh, that it was uploaded into Onyx. So this is how it's going to appear. And we're done with the uh, MWF portion. Now let's jump into Onyx. And now we're on our website. And I'm going to actually need to refresh just to check. There it is. So this is the Howick webinar project. Before we get into the project, I just want to show you a few things here. Uh, I'm going to show you under settings that we need to actually prepare some settings for the CNC machine. Here under machine type, roll former. Uh, here we have different machines. Today we're focusing on Howick. You can add settings. Or I'm just going to show you what I have pre-created. Here you can see some settings that have been pre-created. Uh, for this webinar, I had just pre-created something really quick. I'm just going to show you what it was. Uh, I just like gave it a simple name, just a Halleck webinar. But here you would uh, have to specify the machine requirements. Uh, well, for example, there's some like the unit that you're using, the format, uh, the output measurement. So there are some machine options that you would actually have to or specifications that you would have to fill in. Uh, this is very important uh, for your machine to work properly. So this is just like a, a, a preview. So this is very important. Uh, we're done with the, uh, with the CNC settings. The other thing I wanted to show you is, is settings. okay, this one here, component types. This is also very important. Okay, I'm going to click on profile. Okay, so this part is also very important because these are the profiles that I had uploaded previously or uh, some of them I have uploaded today and some of them I have uploaded before. Uh, it's very important to specify the machine. You see here where it says unassigned. So um, you have to pre-assign the new uh, profiles that, uh, sorry, the new components that we have just uploaded, you have to specify which machine setting you want to apply them to so that your, um, uh, so that your machine can work uh, properly. Um, you could either select just the options that have not been um, selected before, or you can select everything here. And just a quick preview, you have your family symbol, family type, section shape, the return, etc. So this is it's just it's a schedule giving you the information of these components. Here you would click on assign CNC machine. For today we're using Howick, and I'm just going to use the Howick webinar option that I had just uh, previously created. I'm going to click on save. If I go down here, you'll notice that they have been assigned. The new um, components have been assigned. Now we're ready to go into our project. Let's take a look at our project. I'm just going to show you a preview. So we're going to go to Project Viewer and Sequencing just to see it, just to take a look. Okay. I will change the level of detail from coarse to fine. We still don't see anything because we have to load panels. And there it is. There's our panel with the settings that uh, you have created. And um, the other uh, thing I wanted to show you is if we go to Panel Manager. In this project, we only have one panel. That's why it's showing here uh, one panel. So here it's just showing the panels. If you had more, uh, they're going to show up here. If I actually tick this and select this one, Panel 1, this will populate down here. These are the members of this panel. So there's the top track, the bottom track, and all the other members that are here in this panel. Uh, the profile and the section shape, the gauge. So all the information is available here. Uh, most importantly, the machine has been, has been set. 
with the correct settings. So now, uh, the last thing we would have to do is uh, we have to uh, export this in a manner uh, or in a, uh, in a way that uh, the machine, the Howick machine, uh, will understand this information. To do this, we're going to uh, click on Download CNC. Uh, you can create a roll order. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, the file is being downloaded. It's actually been downloaded as we speak. I'm going to close this for now. I'm just going to show you how this is going to look like. So I'm just going to double click. Okay. So this is a CSV file. I just opened it using Excel. And this is how it's going to look. And this is how the Howick machine is going to understand it. It's going to show you uh, all the components. And it's going to show you all the members of this panel with all the information uh, that is necessary uh, for the machine to understand it. Uh, that's it for me, guys. That's it for today. This concludes uh, this week's webinar. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to be giving uh, the mic back to the show. Thanks, everybody. Perfect. Thank you, Anna and Nick, for your presentations. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. To wrap things up, if you had any questions about this webinar, we highly encourage you to write to us at info at surfsoftsolutions.com. That is our email. You can also access this webinar on our YouTube channel and our website at surfsoftsolutions.com. And with that, I would like to thank you once again for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful day ahead.